I made the top 8 of the Pioneer Challenge, and it's all thanks to Nykthos, Kiora, and Karn the Great Creator. If you're not sure what Pioneer deck I'm talking about, then you need to look at Mono Green Devotion. The way this combo works is that if you have a Nykthos and enough Devotion, you can play Kiora, untap the Nykthos, add more mana, play Karn, get Pestilent Cauldron from your sideboard, and as long as there's a Karn and a Kiora in your graveyard, you can return them both, gaining 4 life, play the Kiora again, untap the Nykthos, and keep going until you have infinite life. Then you can cast Pestilent Cauldron for its front half, milling the opponent for as much life as you gained. This combo may seem janky, but because of cards in our deck like Cavalier of Thorns and Storm the Festival, we go through almost all of our deck, and we combo a lot. Now, let's get into the top 8. As we're waiting for the quarterfinals to begin, I just want to remind you, if you like this type of content, then please like and subscribe as it supports the channel, as well as check out Mana Traders and use the promo code on screen now for 10% off your first few months. To start the quarterfinals, we're on the draw and we keep a nice consistent hand. Our opponent leads with a red pathway, which confuses me at first, but then I realize that they're probably playing Transmogrify with Titan of Industry. We leave with an elf and say go. Our opponent land goes and we get to Kiora go. Our opponent follows up with a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and we get to Wolfalo Haven, untap the Haven Land, and Karn. We can then get Meteor Golem, and hope that they don't have a Titan of Industry, as that will slow us down a ton, and they can probably put a Shield Counter on it to not get Golemed. We need them to not have it here, so let's hope. Fable lets them discard two bricks. They attack in for two with the Goblin, but they can't use the treasure because of Karn the Great Creator. They play a Tap Land, and do nothing. This couldn't have been better for us. With an elf off the top, I think it's appropriate to plus on the treasure and lead with Storm. This finds a Nyssa and a Kiora. I think it's a mistake to take the Kiora here, as we can't really do much with the mana, and I would rather have an extra forest in play, because we have so many expensive spells in our hand. I decide to untap the 5-5 and not attack, as 5 damage doesn't really do much on this board, but having 3 blockers actually does something as we can protect all our planeswalkers. To our luck, the Fable of the Mirror Breaker flips, and they just cast an Esper Chariot. This couldn't really go better. Ooh, that's the money card. It's time to combo. Now, I want to say something. We only have 6 Devotion. This makes it insanely awkward. What I decide to do here is get the Chain Veil out of my sideboard, and use multiple Kiora and Nissa untaps to get infinite mana. Now the problem is, I've used my land drop for Nykthos this turn, meaning that I actually can't get black mana from Treasure Vault in my sideboard. This means that I have infinite mana and infinite Karn activations, but all I can do is get every cyber card out of my sideboard into play. Now I don't realize this for 10 minutes, so I literally sit here and combo my opponent for 10 minutes. I'm gonna fast forward through it, it's painful, but yes, 10 minutes, I'm sorry. I... Yeah, I need to be better. To top off the 10 minute combo, I turned all of my lands into 5-5s and then forgot to attack. We do have lethal next turn, we have transmogrifying wand to destroy a creature if they use transmogrify. Godfair statue makes everything two more to cast for them, so it's very awkward for them to resolve a spell. This is game over, we'll combo them next turn. As we have a land drop this turn, we can activate all of our planeswalkers infinite times because of the chain veil and then we can get Treasure Vault from our cyborg to sacrifice for black mana. Now we don't have to gain a ton of life with Pestilent Cauldron, as we do have infinite Kiora untaps, so if we gain enough life, we can then just keep untapping the Pestilent Cauldron to mill them for multiple amounts, rather than try and get the full 60. Winning game 1 on the draw is great for us, as this deck really operates well on the play, so this means that we have a good chance for game 2, and then if we need game 3, we're on the play, which is important for us. Overall, I think they struggle against us as they don't seem to have much interaction, which is great as this deck punishes decks without interaction. Cyboarding with mono green is really simple. We only have two voracious hydras that we can bring in and out of the board, and we're going to be bringing it in this matchup as they play relevant creatures. We're going to take out the slow clunky spells that's going to be Sylvan Carited and Pelucranos, as they just don't have a lot of impact on the early game, especially on the draw. Let's ship it back. Starting game 2, we have to mulligan a clunky opening hand, but we keep a nice 6 that needs to top deck. Yep, we top deck the Karn, let's elf and say go. Our opponent plays a Courier's Briefcase, and we draw another Wolfolo Haven, so let's double Haven our land and see what they can do. They tap 3 mana and sacrifice their Courier's Briefcase, I'm thinking it's a Transmogrify, but they just cast an Esper Chariot and pass back the turn. 
With a brick off the top, I'm really looking for Nykthos, so I decide to cast Cavalier of Thorns to present a blocker for Chariot, as well as dig for lands. We find a layer and pass back, hoping again for no Transmogrify. They crew the Esper Chariot and get in for 5. I'm a bit confused by this attack, but I do block as I was really confused what they are representing, then they fix my confusion by casting another Chariot. We topped like another Cavalier of Thorns, so I decide to go with that as they're making a wide board and I don't want a Karn. But we find a Nykthos. This lets us play our land, play our Karn with a ton of devotion, and let us cast Sky Sovereign. Chariots turned off by Karn. We have a Storm in the Graveyard with a Nykthos, and we have a Lair of the Hydra with a Sky Sovereign that attacks in the air. This is looking great for us, and to even strengthen our turn, they play their land and do nothing and we top deck the Kiora. Our draws have been really insane this quarterfinals. Now we have a ton of mana, we can start doing things. A minus card for Godfair's statue, flashback the storm, get two old growth trolls, crew with the Sky Sovereign with the troll, cast the Godfair statue, get him for six, ping a token and pass. With Godfair's statue on the table, everything that they cast now costs two more mana. They cast a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, make a 2-2 and pass back. This allows us to kill them, as we have multiple ways to attack, remove creatures, that's game, on to the semi-finals. To start the semi-finals, I know that my opponent's on Blue Red Phoenix, and I keep a risky hand as if they have a removal spell, I could potentially be screwed. But, Double Cavalier of Thorns is so great against the deck, I keep. We lead with a turn 1 Elvish Mystic, but sadly they have the removal. We draw a basic forest, have to play our land and pass back. They follow up with a Ledger Shredder. We top deck another elf, so let's play our land, play that and pass. It's not looking good for us. Our opponent considers and fiery impulses, conniving, discarding our card, and we draw a card in the Great Creator. It's not great, but I'm going to play the card and minus for Treasure Vault, so we are guaranteed to cast Cavalier next turn. Our opponent leads with Opt, and then casts another Ledger Shredder attacking the card and passing back. I have two options here. I can Voracious Hydra the Ledger Shredder, or I can play a Cavalier. I decide to go with Cavalier to present a blocker, but I'm not too sure that this is the right play. We are punished by double Knive, double Arclight Phoenix, and bashing in with a load of spells, so I don't think that there was much we could have done otherwise. Speaking on this matchup, I believe Cyborg games are all down to how many Aether Gusts the Blue Red Phoenix player is playing. Ledger Shredder is great for us, as it is not as impactful as Thing in the Ice, so I am happy about this matchup. On to game 2. Sideboarding in this matchup is super simple. Get the Pelucranos out, get a Voracious Hydra in. This is all about mana efficiency. Pelucranos costs a lot of mana, Voracious Hydra is a lot cheaper if you want to kill a Ledger Shredder, as well as just playing a big Hydra and doubling the counters can typically be lethal as they can't really kill it. We keep another similar hand to game 1, but this time we're on the play so our trolls and cabs are coming down faster, as well as we have multiple draws for a ramp spell. Let's keep and see what happens. A load of nothing happens on the early turns, we play an elf, they don't have the removal spell, they opt, and they then play a ledger shredder. We untap and we draw a wolf Willow haven. Now, we can cast wolf Willow haven plus troll, but that will let them connive. I'm going to do it as we want to be able to fuel up these cavaliers and get them down as quick as possible to try and go under aether gust. The connive is annoying, but we should be able to attack through it, and it's only one loot anyways. They attack for two, and we draw a storm the festival. I decide to go for Cavalier of Thorns, as it's higher upside if they don't have a counterspell. Sadly, they do, so we bash in for five, and say go. They opt on my end step, they opt in their main phase, cast another Ledger Shredder, and say go. Now we can resolve a storm. Top decking a storm was great, so let's cast the first one. We find a Nykthos and another Kiora, giving us a ton of mana and allowing us to double spell. I'm not too concerned about the Ledger Shredders, as we're casting way bigger threats then they will get pumps and loots. As we haven't activated Cure yet, I cast Cav because I'm looking for either a land off the top or a land from the Cav. We find a force which allows us to untap Nykthos and cast another Storm, or pulling away with the game. This finds us a card in the Great Creator, which is perfect as we can get a Tormod's Crypt to exile their graveyard to take them off of something like Treasure Cruise. Our opponent untaps, plays a tap land, and casts a removal spell on Karn on our upkeep, obviously trying to have the second spell for Connive if they cast a counter spell. We draw Willful of Haven, so I put it on the Nykthos as we're going to be untapping the Nykthos so it nets more mana. Then we flashback Storm and they have the Disdainful Stroke. As we have a second Storm, I flash that back too, but we whiff. 
As we whiffed, I decide to animate Lair of the Hydra where X is 13 so that they have to chump block with one of the Ledger Shredders. This makes sense and presents lethal for next turn and makes it very difficult for them as they have to chump. I put Karn the Great Creator on top of the deck, the opponent untaps and casts a load of cantrips in the tank and just concedes. Going into game 3 we keep a really nice hand. While this seems slow at first, don't forget they play a load of creature removal spells and we can punish hands if they keep a lot of burn in them. The only type of hands that this would be bad against is a fast phoenix or a good ledger shredder hand. As we're afraid of ledger shredder, when this oath of Nyssa resolves, we take a voracious hydra and pass back the turn. Things are looking good for us when they cast opt, play their land and do nothing, because we were only scared of ledger shredder, so now we can just haven. I am worried about Aethergust as that would slow us down a little bit, but then we have Kiora and Troll to follow up. It is clear to me that my opponent's hand has to be full of cheap removal, so I am going to go for the Kiora. If they do have the Aethergust, that's unfortunate, and they should Aethergust this if they have it, and if they don't, then we're rewarded, and they clearly don't. So I'm going to slam this Troll, fuel up this Nykthos and this Cavalier, as well as this Nyssa, as well as this Voracious Hydra. Things are looking really good for me, especially when this Troll hits the table. Yorgo. The opponent kills Kiora, plays their land, and passes back. We now have Cavalier of Thorns. The opponent will kill the Cavalier in response to the trigger, so that if I do put the Kiora on top of my deck, the other trigger will mill the Kiora, making it pointless, so we're going to put nothing on top of our deck and hope to hit a land to support these other cards in our hand. We do hit a forest so we can attack in for 5 with Lair of the Hydra and Troll. My opponent casts Piece of the Puzzle, gets Treasure Cruise and Spike Filled Hazard, killing the Elf, drawing 3 cards, and shipping it back to me. This is perfect as I can now play Nissa Vital Force, untap the Nykthos, use the Devotion, cast the Cavalier, then cast the Voracious Hydra and double the counters, attack for 4, and present lethal for next turn. Not only do I have a flying blocker in case they do somehow get Arclight Phoenixes on the table, but I have a load of diversified threats with the Lair, the Nissa, the creatures. And they do concede the game, and we move on to the finals. We're on the play, have to mulligan a clunky hand, and have to keep a really weak 6 as I have no clue what my opponent is on. We'd lead with the forest and say go. Finding out they're on blue eye control is really not good as old growth troll is not good against the wandering emperor as well as they just have a load of counter spells so if we draw more lands then we're in a terrible spot. We gotta get lucky. With elf and carotid being our two draw steps we're not looking to be in a good spot so we play troll first to play around sensor and then play our elvish mystic. They play a field of ruin and pass back. We draw another mana dork and I don't want to play this nykthos. It will instantly get field of ruined and it fixes their mana for a card like Absorb, so I'm just going to attack and pass back. This is not looking good. They cycle Shark Typhoon for one, untap, play their land and say go. This is representing the Wandering Emperor, a card that is very good against Old Growth Troll. You can have the read that they don't have it since they didn't play at sorcery speed to exile the tapped Old Growth Troll in their main phase, but again, it could be a Memory Deluge plus Wandering Emperor because you don't want to tap out when the green player has 5 or 6 mana for Storm. We top deck another Old Growth Troll so I bash in for 4 and then in my second main phase I play the Nykthos and activate it for mana to cast the Troll to bluff that I have another premium spell in my hand. The Nykthos isn't really doing anything here as we do have a load of mana, they're gonna Field of Ruin it but I'm also trying to disrupt the fact that they want to cast something like Memory Deluge, Cycle or Bigger Shark, something like this. It's really not looking good, we're playing for very small percentage points. Our opponent Field of Ruins our Nykthos, we get a forest, they untap and blow us out with Detention Sphere. That's an insanely good card to have in the main deck and was not expecting it, and we couldn't really play around it. We untap, draw Storm of the Festival, I'm forced to cast it, they have the Dovin's Veto and you can see that I just wanted to concede, but once they take a draw step and we look at their main fit, but once they take a draw step and we look at the board, I just want to scoop. There's really no chance that I win this game. I've played this matchup a ton. You need to have a Planeswalker at least on the board at this stage of the game to be able to win. Going to game two, I boarded out the Sylvan Carotid and brought in a Voracious Hydra, and we keep an interesting hand. I can't use Wolf Fuller Haven until we have a basic forest, as I don't want to be blown out by Field of Ruin. We draw our Kiora, play that, and play the Oath, and I feel like we have to take the forest, as I don't want to be blown out again by Field of Ruin. My go-to strategy against control as this deck is you should cast your best spell in hand every turn as that will be the best opportunity for them to not have a counter spell. They have two mana, they have to have Dovin's Veto, Sensor doesn't work, so let's play this Wolf Willow Haven, untap with the Kiora, and hope they don't have it.
Yep, they have it. Sometimes this happens against blue-white control, there isn't much you can do, they either have the counter or they don't. Sadly, for the rest of this game, we whiff on every draw step and the in control player has the counter spells. This happens, control punishes bad draws, and we had a bad draw. Not much we could have done, GG's it was a sick run, and we finished the tournament at 8 and 2. We now got some prizes that we could sell for over $200. GG's, hope you guys all enjoyed, like and subscribe, and check out this video because YouTube thinks you like it.